What's up, knowledge seekers? Nico here. It's the 31st annual Shark Week. Have you ever wondered what inspired this week-long feeding frenzy? The history behind it? And where the program is headed? Well, let's talk about it. Since its first airing in 1988, Discovery Channel Shark Week has been one of the longest running events on television. Last year's 30th anniversary season racked in 34.9 million total viewers and 48 million engaged fans on social media. But where did this brilliant idea come from? Well, the most widely recognized story starts when Discovery Channel executives John Hendricks, Clark Bunting, and Steve Shechkin walked into a bar for a little brainstorming session. At the time, the Discovery Network was only two years old, and the trio were looking for ways to boost viewership. Somewhere between beers and trips to the men's room, somebody said the phrase Shark Week. And now the rest is history. Shark Week debuted on July 17, 1988, rallying behind the documentary Caged in Fear. Discovery's viewership saw a spike of double their normal ratings, which led to a second Shark Week, and then a third, and so on. Following this great success, Discovery Channel decided they needed to put a huge emphasis on shark-related content for this annual event, hiring the best photographers and documentary filmmakers to make the highest quality shows possible for the newly acquired fan base of millions. Now before we continue, it's impossible to discuss Shark Week and the inspiration behind it without mentioning the holy grail of the world's fascination with sharks. Of course I'm talking about the movie Jaws. The Peter Benchley, Steven Spielberg, 1974 classic completely changed the way millions viewed making their way into the ocean. The success of this movie led to a Jaws 2. 3. Jaws the Revenge, Deep Blue Sea, Open Water, and many, many more. I refuse to include Sharknado in this pantheon of movies. Jaws was such a huge, intricate part to the inspiration of Shark Week that Discovery even paid homage to Jaws by their subtitled name for their 1991 week, Shark Week The Revenge. Other than the fact that sharks are just pretty awesome and cool to watch, an aspect of Shark Week that has kept people coming back year after year are their groundbreaking filming techniques. The use of the seal decoy cam to help capture the infamous shark breach, as well as the phantom camera a slow motion camera that can record up to a thousand frames per second are just a few of the innovations that have helped push Shark Week to success. But what about some notable films? Don't worry, I have a list of some Shark Week gems for you that I personally enjoyed myself. 1999 Live from a Shark Cage, 2001 Air Jaws, Sharks of South Africa, which had the largest viewing in Shark Week history, 2003 Anatomy of a Shark Bite, 2007 Hypnotizing a Deadly Shark. This is where they discovered by flipping a shark on its back, you can actually put it into a trance-like state. Very cool stuff. 2009 Blood in the Water. 2013 Megalodon the Monster Shark Lives. And the list goes on and on. But Discovery Channel was always looking to push it one step further. Shark Week began introducing hosts for the weekly program and kicked it off in 1994 with none other than the author of Jaws, Peter Benchley. This trend wouldn't pick back up again until the year 2000, but then included host of The Mythbusters, the cast of American Chopper, the host of Dirty Jobs, Mike Rowe, Craig Ferguson, Andy Sandberg, and even Shaquille O'Neal. Shark Week 2017 even had Olympic gold medalist Michael Phelps race against a CGI great white shark. They kind of faked us out making us think it was going to be a real shark, but either way, still pretty cool. Now in its 31st season, although still insanely popular, Shark Week has gotten a bit of backlash this season. Some experts worry Shark Week focuses too much on the sensational and not enough on science. Even with the numbers in the 30 millions, shark biologists think that not all publicity is good publicity. With the cable network pushing to attract a wider and wider audience, scientists fear that there's too much focus on the shark's grisly attacks on humans and not enough on the science and conservation. Dr. Stephen Kaijura, a shark expert at Florida Atlantic University, states, Here you have a really diverse group of animals. They are a fascinating group because of their diversity and evolutional history. But so much of that is ignored with shows called Blood in the Water or Danger Beach. Discovery would argue that by reaching this broad audience, the network has helped raise millions of dollars for conservation, including one million alone for the environmental charity Oceana over the past 10 years. 
Discovery has also supported lobbying for anti-fin legislation and regularly gives press access to scientists during the media surge ahead of Shark Week. This back and forth between scientists and the network in regards to Shark Week's most recent programming is an interesting take that definitely needs to be considered and looked into a little bit further. But if there's one thing for sure, Shark Week has kept sharks in public conversation for the last 30 years and could very well continue for 30 more. Thank you all for watching and I hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and click the little bell so when we post more videos like this, you get to see it first. I'll see you next time.